Hi, this is Paul Soltz from iPhone Dev TV, and we're going to learn about functions. So these might sound scary. You might have learned a little bit about them in algebra with the line drawing and the point system and stuff like that. Um, but they're a little bit more exciting in computers because these are the building blocks for how we get our apps to behave like we want them to. Now, we've already used some functions in some of the programs that we've written, but we're going to learn how they work and sort of how the whole process is. So you can think of these as an instruction manual for your computer. This is going to explain how to do something. We'll be learning about functions, the stack frame, and debugging. So let's get started. If we look at IKEA furniture or Walmart furniture, there's usually instructions on how to assemble something. If we want to make a desk, like we see on the right side, we have to put together the different drawers and the frame and the different parts that sort of all fit together. This same process is what we'll have to do to teach the computer to do something. So if we want to create an iPhone app that's going to check people into a location or post an update on Twitter, there's different things that we'll have to do. And we'll have to explain it in sort of a, a terminology that the computer can understand. When we look at this desk example, there's going to be five different steps in, in sort of an abstract way. We need to build the small drawer, then the large drawer, then we need to build the desk frame, and then we can insert the drawers into the desk. And then we have a, a desk that we can put in your office or your bedroom, wherever you want to put it. And if we could teach a computer to do these same steps, we would be able to manufacture desks in an assembly line, and we could write a computer program to do something like that. So that's the idea of a function. It's, it's creating this reusable sort of instruction set and it has some input parts and it has some output parts. The input parts are the, uh, the screws and the pieces of wood that you're going to use to create the desk. And then, then your output is the actual desk. So let's go on and talk about area. Now, area is a, a nice thing to talk about because when we're working with iPhone apps, we're going to be working with a lot of data. And so you have to work with some math when you're trying to do certain types of applications. So if we're working on a garden plotting app and we want to know like how much seeds we need to, to plant in a certain area, you're going to need a different amount for a small garden in your backyard versus maybe three or four acres uh, of land that you want to plant pumpkins on or something like that. So in our iPhone app, we're going to want to be able to calculate the area in square feet or in square meters or something like that. Let's look and see what this is going to be when we want to explain it to the computer. All right, so here we have a line of code, and I'm going to read it to you how you should read it. It's int area, int side A, and int side B. So we're just going to read across, and I'm going to highlight the different parts. The first part is our return type. So this is what value is going to be returned. And when we're building a desk, the desk is our return type. So we would say, if you give me the instructions and the parts, I can create the desk and give it back to you. And so when we're calculating areas, we're going to take some information, process it, and give you a result. The next is the name. So this, this function has a name. Then we have the parentheses that surround our parameters. We can have zero parameters, and in that case, the parentheses would have nothing in between them. We can have one or more parameters. And for every parameter that we have here, we're going to have a comma in between it. Now, each parameter has a type, like we've seen with our variables. So we'll have int side A and int side B. And then if we look at this as a function, when we see this in code, we're going to see two curly braces after this line of code. And then inside of it are any of the things that we need to do. So in this case, to calculate area, we would say int result is equal to side A multiplied by side B. And then we can return that result. So return is another keyword. We've seen it in some of the applications that we've been working with. This is going to give back that value. So that's just like you giving me all the parts and consider side A and side B the parts for the desk along with the instructions. I do some work, I put it all together and you want the desk back. So I give you that 
resulting desk that I just built. So that's what these functions do. And we use them because they allow us to reuse code and logic in different places without having to write as many lines of code. So rather than writing this calculation every time I need it, the int result is equal to side A times side B, I can just call the area method and pass it two arguments. So what we have here in this expression is we're actually using this function. So this is what you put in your main function. And here what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I want to calculate the area between uh, with a side A of four and side B of two. And so those are going to be inserted into our method. And if we step through this, this is going to result in the total being eight. All right, so this brings us to our next topic, the stack frame. You want to consider this like a sandbox. And again, this is similar to our sticky note example. We're going to have a bigger sticky note that can hold more sticky notes. So a stack frame is basically your sandbox to play in, and it can have its own local variables, which would be separate sticky notes. It's going to look something like this with the main, with the main function. So if we had that line of code in there, it's going to say total is equal to area. And then what's going to happen is anytime we want to run another block of code, we're going to create a new stack frame and we're going to push it on top. So we're going to basically layer up these stack frames. And these are going to be sort of areas where we can do some work and do some processing. And then when we're done, we can remove them. So if we're solving what area 4.2 is going to give us, We'll take four and two, assign them to side A and side B, then do our calculation, we get the result of eight, and we're gonna return that value back. So now we can get rid of this second stack frame, and we're only left with the original one, and we replace the value with eight. And so this is what the computer's doing when it's running your code. Now when we're done here, this stack frame disappears and our program is done executing. So that's the basics sort of of the stack frame. And I think it'll make a little bit more sense once we start working with Xcode to sort of show you what's going on. So let's jump over to Xcode.